We've got another quick fix episode where we love you short time. And tonight we are going to talk about how we get over breakups. We're going to answer some listener questions and sip our nightcap, the Get Over It Gimlet, tonight on It's Complicated. You're listening to It's Complicated with your hosts, Jennifer Golden and Lauren Leonelli. Coming to you live from the AfterBuzz TV studios in Los Angeles, California. Hello, Master Daters. Welcome back for a quick fix episode of It's Complicated. The struggle is real when you're speed dating in the city. <laughs> I'm Jen. And I am not Jen. Nope, still not Jen. And that's Jen. Good. Oh, God. Tonight, guys, <laughs> we have another quick fix. It's like the two pump chump version of our show because sometimes you just got to get in, get out. And get on with your life. Yep. And tonight's quick fix topic is Labor Day weekend. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a hot second to discuss how we also get over breakups and share our personal stories, uh, tips and tricks, and questions from our listeners who follow us on the gram. Yes, but first we need a drink. And tonight we are sipping our nightcap called the Get Over Gimlet because nothing helps you get over a guy or girl, better than a few gimlets to drink away the bad memories. Um, but try not to barf. Because <laughs> that's one of our tips. Right. Cheers. Cheers to the get over gimlet. Get over it gimlet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Jen, I know what you're thinking, guys. Not a normal alcoholic choice for us, but it's pretty good. Yeah, you oh, actually killed it on the drink front. So yeah, it's uh, lime juice and gin and La Croix because duh. Because duh. Mm -hmm. So guys... We're discussing a labor of love here. Right. As you know, this past weekend was Labor Day, so we're going to fill you in on what we were both up to, yeah. starting with you. I had some quiet nights, and I really enjoy them. <laughs> I also went out with my friend, and um, we used to whoop it up on the town together back in our single days. And she is now separated from her last relationship, and we, like, I was like, I'm going hard. Like, I went out and I was like had dinner with her and her party that she was with and was like, I'm going to take it slow. And then I was like, no, no. Seven vodka sodas later, oh, like, God. tried to make her drink them. And she was like faking it. And I'm like, I can see you. You're not drinking it. And I was like total peer pressure, hung over for an entire day. That was like my highlight of Labor Day. That's like as far as I went. And then the rest of it was just like relaxing and hanging out. And I spent all Monday like cooking and cleaning like domestic shit because my boyfriend was coming home from Burning Man. Everything is fine, everybody. <laughs> Everything is fine. He does Phew. not have a playa name. There was no wackiness ensued. I mean, within the realm of Burning Man, he had a really great time. And there are parts of Burning Man that I can accept as fun. It's totally not my jam, like, in the going for a week. But it was fine, and everything's just peachy. Now, does he want to go again next year? No, I don't think so. I think he said he would probably like to go again, but he doesn't need to go, like, right away. Okay. So All right, know, we'll good. See. Yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. And you. So, guys, um, well, as I mentioned last week with our guest Jake Dupree, um, Two weeks ago, today, my guy broke up with me after our show with Brian Howie as our guest. Yeah. Got home, had a the conversation, and he ended it um, out of nowhere. So luckily for Labor Day weekend, I happened to have an awesome trip planned to go to Perfect Tulum timing. with a girlfriend. Yeah. And I felt like I was Carrie in Sex and the City after Big, like, flaked on their wedding. Yeah. And she goes on her honeymoon with her girlfriends. Oh, and, right. Yeah. And, however, I was in better spirits than Carrie was. She was like a, sh like a mopey schmoop. But yeah. I was, like, ready to have a great time because, obviously, nothing is going to stop me from living my life. Of course. Um, And I am, like, the champion of breakups because I refuse to, like, slow me down. No, I think you're pretty good at... Not ignoring going through the emotions of, like, surprise and, like, kind of being, like, annoyed or angry a little, but, like, because it's such a, like, a mystery and came out of nowhere. But, like... Such a mystery. But you're also really good at, like, doing... Knowing how to proactively do things that... It's like you have a choice in the moment, right? Like, you can... You can feel the range of emotions, which are all of the things, and you can go like, I'm going to be sad and then go down the sad path, or you can be like, or I'm just going to ignore it and go get drunk and have sex with like all the people. Ew. But you, I think, are pretty good at 
keeping your emotions in check and balancing them, like, which is what we're talking about today. Like, I think you're very good at like going, okay, well, I feel this way, like sad or uneasy or whatever, but also I'm doing this list of things to make myself feel better because it does help to actively try to make yourself feel better. Oh yeah, there then, is no uh, pity part here. I mean, yeah. okay, so we'll get into it, but just to be clear, like I am a human with human feelings despite yes. somebody that takes action to move on. Um, but I did, you know, sit on the beach with my tropical drink mm -hmm. and have flashbacks to things that this person said to me and things that did not add up with the excuses he gave me as to why he wanted to um, not be Part together. Ways, yeah. yeah. Um, and I mean, guys, when I say this came out of nowhere, literally nowhere, mm -hmm. because I was always the one who would voice concerns in this dynamic. I would say, you know, this bothers me and maybe we shouldn't be together. Or maybe we should see other people or maybe we got too serious too quickly. Or maybe you should date somebody from CrossFit or maybe all the things. I gave him so many outs, like a yeah. million outs. I... Be, but also, you weren't doing it just to give him out. No, you were I mean, still I was just saying, figuring like, things out right. and trying to be open. And, like, you know, considering the relationship as it went on, I was like, okay, well, maybe this doesn't work. I don't want you to change for me, yeah. but this is what I want. So you either change your schedule or fit me in more or whatever it is. Or you find the compromise and the balance, right. which is part of getting to know somebody. But you have to voice your opinion in order to get and there. And I always which did. Which you did. Always did. And every time I did... What I actually loved about him was that he would always come back to me and be like, I think we have something great here. You know what? We can make this work. I think we shouldn't let this go yet. Yeah. Um, at one point, he was like, oh, do you really want to start swiping again when we have something good? Like, do you really want to, like, start all over again? And I was like, that's a weird thought. Maybe that's him projecting, like, what he doesn't want to do. So... Mm. One of the things he said was, like, that he his feelings weren't as far as they should have been by four months. Like, that he should have been, like, head over heels in love. I'm like, I'm not head over heels in love. Yeah. I'm still considering this, like, day to day. Like Which is where you should adults. be at. Yeah. We are two adults with complicated lives, a lot going on. We see each other sporadically because of our schedules. I was still taking it one day at a time. Like I, I would have thought maybe the I love yous came after six months or even over the holidays. Like mm -hmm. we were just starting to figure it out. Maybe his daughter needed to be involved and our schedules become more in sync mm -hmm. for that to happen mm -hmm. because I just didn't think I was even ready to let myself. Like mm -hmm. I guarded myself purposely because I was like, mm -hmm. no, I want to see what happens with this. This is my first time dating like yeah. somebody with this much baggage, for instance. Do I want to dive headfirst in? I don't know. I still yeah. don't know if this situation is right for me. And so, and then... But I wasn't ready to give it up. There was no, like, red flags yeah, to me. Yeah. There was no deal breakers to me. But he was like, well, I don't feel like my feelings are where they should be. And then he also said my career was unstable. He also said that he doesn't think I'm ready to have a family because of where I'm at in my career. I'm like, you cannot tell me oh. where I'm at when you've never voiced to me that when you want these things. You've never said, oh, um... You know, going after a career in the entertainment field or whatever it is sounds sh um, like a little shaky to me. And I don't want to necessarily right. be with it. Where do you see yourself in and a year career-wise? Or... Yeah, exactly. He never expressed never. a concern about that. And furthermore, sounds like it could be, and it could be a lot of things, but it could potentially be, a, a, speaking of projection, a projection of like maybe something from his past. He doesn't want it to look like that or similar or even totally different maybe he wants something to feel the same or who knows but it sounds like projection from something else totally i mean as we discussed our love of our therapist last week on the show yeah. mine was like no this is something that's going on with him he's projecting his issues because he was super critical of me and now we always talk about like things and I feel like I have to expose myself because this is like a lesson for other people. Like I actually totally feel duped and like yeah. potentially manipulated, tricked. I don't know because I did not see this coming. I actually felt safe with this person. So maybe the signs could have been how critical he was. Mm -hmm. I think maybe he didn't necessarily like me because why would you be so critical? Why would, why would you mm -hmm. want to be with me if you think I don't work out enough? My car is not clean enough. I don't train my dog well enough. I don't... Um, what I there's like a slew of if things there's a list, I don't do. There's a list of things that somebody and their lifestyle that's not like again we bring this we say this a lot like that's not within like a moralistic boundary. If there's a list of those things, then maybe you as the person that's part of the relationship pay attention to those things that you don't like and take note and then uh, 
instead of asking someone to change those things, maybe realize like, okay, well, this isn't really maybe right. Because I think asking someone to change those things kind of sets a weird boundary. And we are talking about communicating. And while some of those things can be talked about potentially, like I also don't know that that if there's like a barrage of things that are bothering you, like pay attention to what you want too. And don't lead down a relationship that is going. Yeah. Also, by the way, though, like, okay, for instance, one of the things was like, he out of nowhere one day was like, are you going to cook for your children? Or are you going to just order in food for them? I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa with the attitude. How about you say it a different way? Like, hey, how do you envision raising your children? Like, hmm. you right now don't cook. Is that something that you like are that you would want to do in the future? I don't know, like a more positive yeah. spin on this conversation. It was like so accusatory and it was like judgment coming from somewhere else. Yeah. Like I was already on the stand for a crime that had not been committed. I was like, uh, how about you just say something nice? Like, um, I would love for you to cook for me one night. If your goal is to get somebody to cook for you, ask. Also, exactly. I would always go to him. So now here's my list. His, his list about complaints about me are not deal breakers in my mind. I actually think they're quite petty and judgmental and really stupid. They're very trivial. The fact that my car is not perfectly clean once a week, really? How yeah. about I... The reason it's not is because I prioritized our relationship. I drove to him every single time so it would make his life easier. I offered to pick up food. Well, I offered to help actually, organize his house. And the make, details like, behind it don't actually matter. Sorry, but it doesn't. If you're the type of person who doesn't have a clean car in which... I'm your friend. Your car's not clean. It really kind of never is. Who fucking cares? Right. That's what I mean. I, Who cares? It's not that big of a deal. It, it doesn't make me yes. a bad person. It doesn't make me a bad right. partner. In fact, what I did was celebrated him every time I saw him. Right. Wanted to make, like I said, wanted to make his life easier and better and more convenient. And I, I was understanding of his baggage, his list of baggage, his schedule, everything. So... I bought him a Father's Day gift. He's not my father. He's not my husband. And I don't even know his child. Right. At, like, at some point... But those things are... Did the, apparently none of that mattered. Well, you Because know, the other things did. Well, I think that if somebody is, for whatever reason, not ready or not feeling it or whatever, which I think we can easily go back and say it sounds like a him issue... Um, you know, and this happens a lot in relationships where you're just starting to get to know somebody and you need to kind of figure it out. You don't want to make a judgment call, so you have to get deep enough into it to know. But I think where we're, we've talked about before on the show how to break up with someone, like, I don't know that this is the right way. It seems like there wasn't enough um, communication in the correct, like, positive way in order to get to an end goal it seems like the communication that happened about any of these things that do seem petty and judgmental was with the end goal being like not really and like i'm not really going there um it didn't seem like the intention was to make it last and so in order to get over these kind of things without blaming too much of yourself or trying to keep the balance of going through the emotions and not like ignoring them but doing things to help yourself like we have a list of things that we think is like good because we've all been through it right like this is a specific situation with specific points of non-communication or it's like but yeah. honestly guys i walked away from this and i'm like oh my goodness i never knew this person that's how i felt yeah like either he's a sociopath yeah super manipulative um just wanted a girlfriend and he once called dating apps like dating roulette and he's like when you land on a good one you just stick i'm like i'll take that as a compliment i guess but like ultimately i am so just blown away by all of it that i just am like dumbfounded i'm like get me out of this dynamic right now like yeah. i don't want to feel a thing for this person anymore because he's already in some ways wasted my time right because if he at some point didn't want to be with me he shouldn't have kept it going or called mm -hmm. me every night or facetimed mm -hmm. me every night or been a part of my life and like making all of these future plans that i'm like let's take action as fast as humanly possible so i did that but anyway i hopped right on bumble and hinge actually what i did was 
took a note out of his book mm. or a page out of his book and I jumped right on Bumble and I got the paid membership mm. for like one month mm-hmm. because it shows you who already likes you. So I can just be reactive, basically. And I have like more matches than That's I could great. have ever had ever. That's a good point, you guys. It's like an ego boost, that guys. That is a good thing. I don't thing. even know what to do. Yeah, that is a good thing to do. If you're looking for a little bit of a, like a boost in confidence, maybe don't go out and like make sex with everyone. No, but like, don't do that. think about how to increase your chances. If you're on a dating app and you're like, oh, I don't want to go back on it, but how could it be different? Mm-hmm. Maybe change your profile picture or maybe like your opening quote or try to go even if, and that may not help you, but just try. Try or get the paid membership up in a notch. Tinder has some stuff like that. Bumble has, uh, like, t- and if you're a college student, Tinder has Tinder U. Mm-hmm. Like, try different avenues within the things that you've been doing before to give it, like, a fresh start. It shakes the feeling of, like, the shit before. You know when you, like, associate something with the past and, yeah. like, then you have a bitter taste in your mouth? Well, try to do – these are things you can actively do to help yourself. That was a smart move. Thank you. I mean, here's the thing. If I am serious about finding love and all of that and, like, obviously what what I can say I learned from this dynamic yeah. is that I am ready to be a partner because everything I did I am proud of. Yeah. And I really put my heart and all into it and I felt like it was a very adult relationship for me as far as, like, my approach. And I just feel like I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing while I could be down on myself and think, like, what did I do wrong or, like, well, I don't know. I also have theories that maybe there's like some other girl that he met and he was just like, I need to cut this now because but I feel like still, a dick. But even still, if that's the case, like you don't want to be with I someone that, right. yeah, exactly. I, I mean, I don't want to be with that person anyway at that point. But um, I was like, I'm going to take matters into my own hands, get Bumble, see what else is out there. I know there are great guys out there and I am trying to stay positive. And that will, I read a really great book on my vacation, but we'll get into our list. And then the other thing I really want to bring up quickly is closure. A mm-hmm. lot of girls and guys, mostly girls, say, I'm making more of a drink because I drank that too. You fast. should um, say they need closure. And that can mean a different thing, like different things to different people. Yes. What I think it means is you need closure for yourself because yeah. nothing anybody says to you usually is going to make you feel better. Right. So instead of feeling worse from them telling you what they actually don't like about you, which many of the excuses probably could have been a cover up for God knows what, mm-hmm. but. Do I really want to hear what this guy has to say about? You're gonna wh- wonder no. if it's real anyway. You're right. gonna wonder I don't trust if, him. Even if he told for you a second. exactly, even if he told you all the things that he told you, which he told you, like you f- you think other things anyway because it maybe yeah. doesn't make sense or you think it's a, it's a, so uh, everyone talks about oh don't ghost me but like also pay attention to the fact do you really want to hear like to just piggyback on what you're saying getting over somebody or finding closure, I think a huge part of that is being okay with not knowing or not having an answer. Accepting the fact that you don't totally know what that person was thinking or you don't totally know what went on is like a huge part of closing the door. Right. I think that the the choice to make is be okay with not knowing, but decide what the answer is for yourself. So whatever that might be, like for me, it might be that he met somebody at CrossFit because he was so freaking obsessed with CrossFit and apparently my weight that oh my god I, it really gave me a complex actually when we were in tulum my girlfriend was like i'm actually really worried about you like she's known me since i was 12 she's like you've never been fat you've never been no. inactive you've never been unhealthy why is this person making you feel this way i'm like honestly at least twice a week would bring up working out or like certain things about my lifestyle like he'd be like you drink every night i'm like i don't actually drink every night or he, he would like call me out on things and oh well if you do it was just like bizarre yeah that's weird things that he was saying to me yeah and it was hurtful and yeah you i would actually really want to be with somebody that builds me up and is like complimentary and this is important to pay attention to in part of closing the door and paying attention to like you're saying things that you can make decisions about yeah. for yourself you don't you're trying to be accepting and open and maybe like just Deciding, are you taking things too personally or is these insecurities that you're bringing into the relationship or now in retrospect I don't like these things yeah I am not going to accept right. these things and this is part of helping with the closure totally so yeah when you take stock in all the things that go on I think that gives you the closure because you do realize things like things I thought were like not deal breakers or red flags because they were just like quirks or things that could be discussed totally. or changed I really like didn't hold that serious. I was like, I'll just talk to him about how he talks to me or how critical he is or, you know, I'll address those which things with him. Which is fair, so, which is fair because yeah. you... Can- 
meeting a new person and learning how to communicate with that person is a skill. And so you do have to give it time to say like, okay, maybe he didn't say that the way I right. want to hear it. We'll we'll figure out how to fix that. So that's a fair thing to try give a chance to. Right. Well, so all of this being said, the closure for me is I've either decided he had met someone else and that's it and he let me off like and was like before it gets too serious or who got who knows or that it was just like he wasn't that into me. And that's mm -hmm. okay, too, because I want somebody super into totally. me. Totally. And I don't want to spend another day with somebody that's lukewarm about me. I want somebody that is like, oh, my God, I get to be with you. Exactly. That's awesome. Get to. And you want to be around, we said this last week, people that celebrate you, which you feel like you did, so you kept your side of the street clean. You don't want to be around people that just tolerate you. And whilst he wasn't, like, awful to you, he was tolerating you, and it was obvious, and that's not okay. And for whatever reason, I think we can now say, like, he's just not that into you is an umbrella that fits even if he was found another girl. Like, he obviously, if he yeah. did do that, it's because he wasn't that into it. For whatever reason, you feel good about who you presented and yes. who you were. And that is also part of the closure. So I think everyone, I think the good takeaway from this is please be okay with knowing that you don't get to know all the answers. Right. And, and that's a tough pill to swallow. It is so that will hard. Send, okay. And like, it sends me well, into like anxiety oh yeah. world. I mean, let's, I, I am not a perfect person and I am not always this okay. Like how I sound probably, but like, I have the gamut of emotions that have yeah. been like flashbacks to things that he said. I mean, I literally woke up with him the day before he did it. So it was like super surprising. So, it also doesn't really feel real, but I'm like, I'm a logical person. And it's in my shock. sound mind, yeah. none of this is what I want because I wouldn't want a human who behaved this way. And allow yourself to bounce back and forth right. between those two things. Because, I am sad. Yeah. I lost of a person course. that I built um, routines with, um, certain inside jokes. I become very comfortable with this person. We talked every day. And you he had, FaceTimed me every night. And like, it's disappointing to have to let go of the hope that you yeah. that became more real with that was connected to this person and plans we were making and things yeah. that i saw in the future and what i was excited for and okay so there's one thing um we had talked about like the la auto show and i, I love cars and yeah. i've always loved cars my dad thought i was a boy growing up it's a whole thing but so when we first started dating i said something about the auto show and he's like okay well if we make it to november december oh, God. then and i was like okay well if we make it and then we joked at some point later like oh do you think we'll make it and he's like of course we will so i happened to go online when this ended and i was like you know what i want to just check when the la auto show is and i put it in my calendar i'm like i'm still gonna go good this is not about him and me this was about me wanting to go to the auto good. show and i will go with somebody else because ultimately like I'm the fun one. <laughs> I'm going to still also, have fun, guys. See, this is part of not sulking to, not getting lost in the sulk. No, you Move can't. Move through the emotions and feel sad because you cannot ignore it. They will eventually come up. Um, I think that Derek and Daniel talked about that when, or Derek David, and David yeah. uh, talked about that, that when name. they were here. They you you can't completely ignore it because it will resurface at some point but you also then please you guys try to take control the anxiety feeling of like someone ripping the rug out from underneath you or ripping the wool out from underneath you as jen says <laughs> is is a feeling of know. loss of control and part of it is being okay with losing the control and part of it is now please know that you do have a sense of control you can look back and say like nobody's perfect you can look back and be like uh you know what i would have done these things different maybe he did have a point with that uh, okay that's something that i'll think about and you could change your mind or not on it but it is something to reflect on. And then the things that you now know you want or don't want. In fact, you made a list. Lists are good. You know how we talk about make a list of all the things that you want in a man. Like, make this list again. Reassess that list because it's going to be a lot clearer now. Oh, yeah. And I mean, I, I made a list. And then every day when I was in Tulum, I said the list out loud to myself. Oh, I would really talk great. to myself at all times. And I know that probably sounds crazy to most people. But you have to sort of change your thoughts so like i would feel myself going towards sadness or toward confusion or toward trying to put together the dots and like understand what the hell happened <laughs> that is not the same connect the dots put together the pieces <laughs> or connect the dots <laughs> okay put together the everyone we have another one <laughs> yes the point is i would try and sleuth my way into finding answers and there was just no point because i was like speculation gets you nowhere and totally so it goes back to sort of just 
being okay with not knowing. But there are times when I'm like, no, I am an investigator. I need to know. And if you need to tell yourself it could have been this or it could have been yeah. that to hone it in, go ahead. But just know also it could be this or that could or be anything. 500 other things. Can and I say? Yes, yeah. Jeff, please. It sounds please. like this guy, the only person he really loves is himself. I don't actually think he loves himself. You know. If he's working out as much as he is. He that, sounds like he's obsessed with himself. No. It's like. I think it's the opposite, Jeff, actually. I think the reason he's so critical and the reason he works out um, is because he actually is very down on himself and it's his way of getting control is by taking action and con like criticizing me for the things that I'm not doing. Yes. But I'm okay with the fact that my car is not always clean because I'm a really good person and a really good partner and yeah. super loving. So like what's important here? I don't know, guys. I don't know. You, you guys call in and tell us. Good <laughs> advice coming from the man who just got married. Congratulations on that, Jeff. Yes. Thank you, guys. I it, mean, That's the thing, though, is love is the most fun when the other person in your life is the most important thing and it just doesn't sound like he that's what it is jeff yeah. it's that he wasn't making her very important right. and you can do that when you have a child you can do that after divorce like that's okay and you can love working out because it makes you feel good it doesn't need to then it, it's a problem when you turn it around and and judge other people for not being who fucking cares well, i think he he worked out my boyfriend out. does not work out ever and i'm not like hey, you need to do that i'm like bye i'm going to work out good thing there's two of us and you don't do it because now I can go. Right. <laughs> works out for me great. No, I mean, I I think it's great if he wants to work out. I do think he works out, though, for, like, more, like, mental health reasons. Oh, maybe. And yeah. I do think but maybe yeah. he thinks other people should do it for the same reason. So if I said I was stressed, he's like, well, you should be working out more. I'm like, okay, but that's but not the for same me, thing. Yeah. I, like really relax in a different way for me it's spending time with him for me it's having a glass of wine for me it's talking yeah. to friends or watching mindless television or and everyone hanging out with my dog is, or everyone's whatever stress is different like stress for me is a more anxiety thing so working out helps but stress for you could be something totally different it's, in which yeah. working out wouldn't help i also go to therapy regularly yeah. and get to like so have conversations mm -hmm. with my therapist he doesn't do that and that actually was That's alarming to me a little... because someone that goes through divorce and has all of this drama and didn't work on himself at all, that was concerning. When I would say to him, like, uh, what would your ex-wife say about you as to why you broke up? And he would be like, oh, I don't know. And I'm like, or why Why yeah. would you say you married this? Why would you marry this person if you didn't like any of the same things? And it's like he never took stock in why he made choices that he made. It sounds like he has, like, a lack of ability to self-reflect. And that's a scary, dangerous yeah. thing, I think. And so, in, in part So it turns of, it on you because it's easier to point out in you totally. what he doesn't like because it's actually about him that he doesn't like. And I think that part of helping yourself get over situations like this or even just breakups in general is the ability to self-reflect yeah. that is huge and it's the only thing you have left you're not gonna know what the other person is, person is fucking thinking even if they tell you it might not be honest they might be lying or they might not even know subconsciously <laughs> so listen <gasps> Take, listen to what they have to say, be okay with not knowing, and then self-reflect. And Yeah, like, so wait, going back to the list thing and talking to yourself, yeah. that's a lot of self-reflection. So what I was doing was reminding myself against my better, you know, insecurities or anxiety or wandering mind to, like, the unknown sadness. I would redirect my attention to putting out what I wanted. Because none of the past matters. Okay. It had already happened. I didn't want to spend any more time. I'd actually get mad at myself when I started to, like, think about him in, like, a positive light. Because I was like, wait a second. No. He doesn't deserve any more of my time. Right. I deserve my time. But be careful, guys. I think that's good. And that's probably just what you tell yourself. But that might not work for everyone. Right. Like, if getting mad at yourself, quote, unquote, Jen, is the motivation, great. But, like, guys... Also, and I know you're doing it still too, like it's okay to feel the feelings, like let it happen. And then to how, figure out how to get yourself out of it. If it's like mine, getting mad at yourself. It, mine is redirecting the energy and putting out what I actually want into the universe and making it like, okay, these things happen. Let's extract the yeah. positive information and put it forward because, okay. So you want to move in a certain direction. Right. So now one of we're one of the things we do when we get over a breakup is we read and like there's a million great self-help yes. books out there and so w the one i was reading on my trip is you're a badass by jen sincero and also i'm reading that book too it's also just great in general yeah. to read but in a yeah. time like this very helpful yeah because the thing is it's not about a breakup it's about anything in your life that might cause doubt and make you forget you are a freaking badass right so it built me back up in a way where I was like, oh, hold on a second. I And it helped me make my lists of 
A, who I am, and I needed to remember that. B, um, what I want, and also what I'll never stand for again. Yeah. And it just helps you, like, feel your best and take action toward those things. And it is also, like, a self-help book in terms of it gives you, like, activities and guides and things like that. Which is very helpful. And, um... We d- actually have talked about this before, but that E squared book is a great random book that will help you realize that your energy is like a direct result of like how your situations in your life can turn out and gives you experiments to do to prove that your energy, if you focus your energy, it'll take you in a certain direction. I also love zebras don't get ulcers because it helps you deal with stress and anxiety, which I have admitted before is like a thing for me. And it's a great general lesson that can be funneled into like the anxiety that is with a deals with a breakup, but it is very good in general. All of these books like, our Instagram listeners asked us, what books do we read? All these books are great for general life, but specifically for this can totally be applied. Another really good one, just to wrap this book thing up, is it's called A Breakup Because It's Broken. Uh, yeah. It's broken, guys. We may not see it at the time. We may paint red flags white. We may wonder until we turn blue in the face. I don't think that's the right if thing. If it broke, either. don't fix it. Exactly. So this Which helps is not you- the same, but... No, but it helps you realize that there were breaks in the relationship and you want something that isn't broken. So you start to understand that it didn't work out because it wasn't supposed to. It's not right. And what you want is something that is right. And you're allowed to still be hurt by it, but just start paying attention to those things and it'll help you move forward. We also were asked by our Instagram listeners if we were, why we are so cute. And that is because (laughs) we we are. We were asked that. But also, (laughs) we were, we get asked that a lot. We also were asked (laughs) what podcasts we listen to besides our own. I just listen to ours. You (laughs) listen to this if you're trying to get over a breakup because this one specifically will help. But also, these are totally random. You're going to be like, what the fuck are you talking about, Lauren? but my favorite murder and case files are really good because they talk about true crime. It gets you like out of your head and puts things into perspective. Like I'm dealing with this breakup, but like also people are getting murdered. And then also <laughs> furthermore, like, oh my God, I thought the guy was with was horrible. Well, at least he didn't murder me. Or what if it I, gives you ideas how to murder someone? It <laughs> gives you ideas how to murder somebody. If that guy is really horrible, then you're like, I could sprinkle arsenic in his food and no one would know. But no. also you guys, it's, it helps you laugh. It helps you get out of your head. Yeah. And it's, they're just fun. Like, go somewhere else. Sometimes you just need to go somewhere else. Sometimes you do. And sometimes if you're like me, you need more self-help. Because all you do, you're like a self-help junkie. Yeah. So you listen to Super Soul Sundays with Oprah. But those are good, too. You guys do stuff like that. Or like or Goop. Yeah, or Goop. Or like him and her podcast gives yeah. a really good, like, beauty and anxiety tips. And it helps you feel good from the inside out. So those are all good ones to pay attention to. Besides, it's complicated. And you're already here, so you know. Yeah, you do. And also... Dana, our loyal listener in the Bay Area, was really upset when she found out that you broke up with, that you and your, but see, people care. I know, And thank you for listening, Dana, because now, listen, see, we're getting over it. And this is how you get over things. We're giving you tips. We are. you need them. Um, We're also swiping a lot and going on dates, so whatever. But I mean, uh, I'm not, but I'm very supportive of you. I can help you you swipe. Yeah, You are. And I'm running people by you, and it's a whole Mm -hmm. thing. Um, Mm -hmm. I sent you a cute one today. This new (laughs) prospect, you guys is let me just say a vast jump up literally because he's six six and like also <laughs> oh my god i'm just saying anyway okay um, what else do we do we practice meditation yeah you're better at that than me i oh, really I need to it. do that i re- speaking of anxiety i really need to do that and i need to carve time out in my day for it but i'm gonna let you well take somebody a... should break up with you because you're not making it a priority and your car Jen! isn't clean no. you're it's these things no i'll <laughs> do it because you can motivate me why don't you i mean there's some self-help <gasps> it's just so there's ridiculous some guided meditation apps <laughs> i've done it before i just don't practice it consistently enough but why don't you tell people this is more yes. your wheelhouse so um i listen to insight timer because they have a bazillion meditations at every length of time and for every cause so you can pick your length of time and you can pick your subject matter oh, and they have something that. for everything so like you can even start with a five minute or just to get it going in the morning and then you can up you can um increase your time limit just when you start getting more comfortable or if you have more adding time it to on your routine days, yeah. exactly so they have for morning night they have it's just 
for anxiety, relationships, love, depression, sleep, amazing, uh, manifesting, uh, everything, all the things. It's so freaking great. I love it, and, and it's this, free. you guys, again, like the books and podcasts we recommended. This is just good for in general as well. Yeah, it's a, it should be something you practice and pay attention to anyway. But again, in a specific breakup situation, is also very useful. Exactly. Um, okay, so. What activities do you like to do, Jen, to keep yourself busy? You make like a – whether or not you have to like tell yourself I'm going to go do this thing today or whether or not it's just something you do without thinking, you got to motivate yourself, you guys. You got to like make – get up and get out and like get over it. What are What is one thing that you like to do to like activity-wise to make yourself like feel good and move away from the sad? I love to spend time with family and friends and people that love me because they ultimately support you. My friends will not, as you know, because you are one of them, um, don't, um, what is the word? They don't just build me up because it's cute and what you're supposed to do. They yeah, actually honest. are honest yeah. about, like, everything. And But they do love me because I've had friends for a lot of years. These are not new friends. They've known me. They know how far I've come. They know what I want. They, they've seen me during this relationship. Or they're my family who are just my family. But, like, it's nice to be around people that already love you because then you feel secure again yeah. in the people you have in your life. And pay attention to the different groups of friends you have because it's okay to have the ones that you go out with. Yeah. And the, but the solid ones that love you for you and are honest with you, make sure that you're spending extra time around them because they're really going to give you the kind of nurturing you need. Also, I, I squeeze my dog. And that. Maul your animals. Yeah. I like to this is going to sound so girly but like I like retail therapy. I like getting my nails done. Like if I have a cute outfit that like is going to like motivate me to well I want to wear this cute shirt out so now I'm going to go out yeah. and my nails just got done so I'm going to go like fucking do it then if like, that's feel what good makes about you, yourself exactly. I actually immediately got back from Tulum and was like I need to get my eyelashes done they look real I, good thank you and he didn't like my eyelashes one of the many things he also didn't like about know, my nails my that, eyelashes yeah. I'm like you mm -hmm. met me with these Wait, gotta sorry, go hold up he said he didn't like your eyelashes. No, they were too long. He said they should be one inch shorter. I'm like, then I wouldn't have eyelashes. Jen, you got lucky that you're out of this thing. Thank right? you, Jeff. It, but... You would think I was some toad that was like, <laughs> thank you. Gross and that's awful. Just, that's a red flag if you ask uh, me. Thank you for the chime in on the married guy who's real happy. I know. Jeff mm -hmm. knows all things. He's he very does. wise like Buddha. You should be excited. I mean, like, just in terms of a listening to, if I could jump in. Yeah. I, mean, I know it's sad and I don't want to invalidate that, but it's also exciting, right? Because you're out of it now and it's like it's get excited you can be sad and excited at the same time totally you can you can, you can. in my mind i am the bachelorette I... and i'm like the world is my oyster and i'm gonna make dating my bitch also jeff like that is real Insightful. profound yeah. and are you trying to take my fucking job <laughs> no 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 i just I, <laughs> someone told me that after a breakup once and i was like you know what i can be sad but also excited right i now. love that you are yeah. allowed to have a range of emotions yeah. that is so true Yes, I love that. Okay, that I am excited what? to find Good. the right person. I can tell you are. Yeah, I am. Um, okay, so what kind of beauty tips and self care tips help us feel pretty besides like getting our nails done and stuff like that? Like, what do you? What helps you feel good on the outside that then can like bleed into the inside? So when you go to sleep pretty, you wake up feeling good. Like my, I've been perfecting my night routine for a while. Me too. And here's the thing though. Sometimes like when you're in a relationship, you like sacrifice a little bit of it because you fall asleep or you miss a couple steps. I'm like rejiggering my night routine. Yeah. And I mean, you guys live together. But so you, you now like are, you have all your stuff where you are. But, so you're, you're good. But, but like, when you wake up, you can tell the products you've used, they've like worked. Oh yeah. So I feel like I I wake up pretty and I'm like, oh, I'm going to conquer today. I'm going to meet my future husband. I'm going to kick ass. What? My dog's going to think I'm even What's cuter. your favorite like product that you put on at night that you feel like you um, see? Everyday oil. What is that? It's like a concoction of all oils. We're going to put it in our Amazon cart okay. or our, our Amazon store. And you store put it all guys. over your face? Y yeah. So, I mean, different people have different skin types, obviously. So, oil, a lot of oil doesn't always work for some people. So, I happen to not work well with a lot of oil, but oil is everything. It, like, actually takes things out. But I put a light layer of it. It smells like the spa. I go to sleep, like, shiny mm. and glowy. And I wake up, like, smooth as a baby. <gasps> I love it. You guys, I love, I love um, Dr. Diaz, who was on oh, our show. Yes. Their Honor MD products, I am telling you, first of all, they are not that expensive and they're medical grade and you can get them the online. The serum they Even brought Even if you us, don't everything. live in LA, please go to John Diaz, Dr. John Diaz in Beverly Hills and look up their products. Everything they have is legit. Yeah. Those, medical all those grade, products so make you feel good. good. Yeah. Um, okay. Also wear cute PJs. And that too. Yeah, you go to sleep um, feeling cute. 
we think making lists helps you guys i also we're going back to this too if you make a list of the things you want i think that's great refocus that list after you've ended something and you're moving on to the next thing because you're going to have some things to add or take away and i feel like if you make a list of things you don't want that's great do it burn it when you're done yeah let it go because you don't want to if you read that book e-square that we're talking about which will also be on our amazon shopping cart list Please make sure that you realize the energy you're putting out into the world will stay. It doesn't, the, the universe doesn't um, detect negative or positive. It's just whatever it you're thinking what is hears. there. So, Which is why I keep repeating to myself what I want over and over and over and over. Okay, so really quick before we wrap, when do we start dating again? I know that's a question we got on Instagram. Yeah. I think that my answer to that is... It depends on how long the relationship was, and please pay attention to how you're feeling. If you're excited about going on a date or you're out, one of the signs I feel like you pay attention to is this. If you're out and you find yourself like attracted to a dude, this is me personally, then I know I'm more ready. I, I still explore it, go on the date. If you don't feel ready, pay attention to your gut. But if I feel like I'm visually attracted to another dude, that means I'm ready to start exploring. I think that is great and true. Um, and I agree with that. Um, I also think that uh, it depends on why you broke up. Like in our case, I'm like, oh, I just need to move on from this immediately. So I'm going to go back out there and not be discouraged that everyone is untrustworthy and a manipulative person, potentially. Um, so They're not, but know that it's out there right but but so i'm trying not to focus on what could be and i'm like nope everyone is great it was just one bad apple so i am going to date one bad apple don't spoil the whole bunch exactly and so i am back out there because i think it's hopeful for me yes. to look at it as like wow there are so many other people out there i am excited to start over i'm trying to frame it in that mindset excited and sad at the same time is okay exactly. and one one more thing what do we avoid after our breakup <sighs> social media stalking Okay, good. Drunk dialing. Yes. Oh my God. So good. I and avoid, I know you're going to be shocked, drinking too much. For me personally, when my anxiety is really high, I have like a little less of an appetite and my heart is like pounding all day long. So alcohol feels different for me. Mm -hmm. So just please pay attention if that's how you're feeling, like physical effects of anxiety or stress or sadness, like pay attention to like drinking alcohol, even though you think you got it because you're like a drunk girl and you're having fun. Pay attention to it's going to feel a little different. So just watch it. Also, it's don't not have, cute to no. be barfy and stuff. So just, you know, and don't have sex too soon. It's not a good idea. You'll just feel icky about yourself. You'll regret it in the morning unless you're somebody that can really compartmentalize. But then do it fine. But for me, it's too emotional, and it's not the same yeah. person. You'll Although know, you'll know when it's you know, okay to I've, start exploring that. Yeah. Pay attention to your like what your eyes are seeing, what you're attracted to, and exactly. how you're feeling in the moment. You guys, all the things we talked about and more. Listen, re-listen to our show if you need to. But there's a lot of stuff on our Amazon page at amazoncom shop complicated show where you can shop for all of our favorite things and some of the things that we talked about today. Um, they will be up there, and you can utilize those links to help yourself get over a bad break like oh, we do. Yeah, because it happens. It's fucking complicated. People. It is. And guys, if you have anyone you want to set me up with, that's awesome. Oh my god, send us all of the. Things Things, Everyone slide can be, into our DMs. Yeah, we are matchmaker. Ready. Oh my God, it's so into exciting. It, into yes. It. Oh my God. Thanks so much, Jen. Thank you, Lauren. No, you mean not Jen. All right, not Jen. Oh my God, you're <laughs> so welcome. And don't forget to tune in next week. We've got our guests, Janie Schwartz and Dina Litt of Local Mercado. And they're going to come talk about more dating relationships and fun. And we are so excited to have them. Oh in. yeah. And we are playing this song because <laughs> we think it's very fitting. And Jen, where can everyone find you? Guys, you can find me at Jennifer Golden on all of the uh, social media platforms and on Bumble. And you can find me <laughs> at Lauren Leonelli on all the social media. And you can also find her at the LA Auto Show. Yes, so you can. don't forget if you to want to be my date. That. Start now because it's in a few months. I'll be your date if you don't Thank have you. one. Perfect. Okay, all right. We will be back next week. Love, Love you a long time. time. From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff. We would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. 
Views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.